Hello everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Here in front of me I have a leech treadle wheel. Now this is how they come from my carpenter. Um, the variant of the wheel that is fully assembled. But even if you're getting one that is a kit and you've got it assembled, you've varnished it, because the kit is not varnished, you have to varnish it. Um, and once you put it together, all right, there's a few adjustments to make to the wheel. So basically, this what this video is about is just to sort of show you, uh, go through some of the adjustments that need to be made. Okay, so let's just start. Um, what I'm going to do is just check my time because, okay, it's 4.17. Got to keep an eye on the clock because I keep going over time with my videos. <laughs> so we're going to, you're going to take your wheel head. Open him out. That's what your wheel head is going to look like. Okay, you've got back pins there. And there is a um, a screw there, an Allen screw. So in with the kit, you should have, or in with the wheel, you should have a key. All right. All right, you're going to get a key. So the first thing that you're going to do is once you've loc located your wheel where you want it to be, I recommend you do that first before you start doing anything else. Get it set up where it's going to be, you know. So you take your wheel, your wheel head, and on the on the top of the on the the shaft here. I've got a little bit of cling wrap here to undo, get rid of. On the top of the shaft there is there is a flat. A flat, what do I mean by that? I mean just here on the side it's ground off so there is a flat, okay? So what we want to do is Incidentally, I suppose while I'm here, I ought to just show you um, this actual um, this is what we call the slops tray. Okay, so it it simply lifts off. Okay, like that. Um, there are some little brass brass catches here and here which these little things that stick out they they fit into. Alright just just to show you that. So Take your where it's got a, a flat, that's where you're going to locate that over there, like that. And then you can just hand tighten the the Allen screw to the flat, and then you can take the key here and tighten okay so he's nice and tight all right that's that's the, the, that now on the other side of the on the other side of the wheel we need to attach the chain and at the moment the chain my 
my carpenter wrapped it up so that in, when I brought it over here, it wasn't going to be knocking around the place. So that is basically going to attach up there onto that. So, just for now, I'm just going to attach that on there, just very loosely like that, because the next adjustment that you're going to need to do is you're basically going to need to, you're going to need to sit on the wheel, okay, and you're going to want to get some idea of of the, le the length of chain that you're going to need. So the actual um, the actual uh, treadle bar there, this, can be raised or lowered. And it's raised on the chain and hook. It's raised here on the on this little guy. This little collar moves up and down, you see. So that supports the leather strap here. And um, on the other side, so I'm going to get a, get a spanner and we're going to do an adjustment here down on this. All right. Uh, let's see, we'll take that one, I think. So we're just going to, we're going to raise it up a bit. It looks like it's a bit low at the minute. Just loosen it, I haven't got to undo it, just loosen it. And now you can raise that up. We'll just raise it up a little bit there. And just nip it tight on those. Okay, that's that. I'm gonna need an Allen screw or an Allen key, I should say. Gonna need an Allen key next. For get in here. This is basically what we want to do is we want to we want to raise raise this, you see. Did I find the right Allen key now? Oh, I should have done that ahead of time, shouldn't I? Let me just put this down a second. That's too big, it must be a small one. Must be, must be that one. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to, you see what I'm doing? I'm just tightening, tightening this collar. At the moment, it's just a little bit approximate, okay? And now here, I'm just r r raising this a touch, you see, up. Now that needs to be lifted up there on the chain. that. Everything you see while it's it's new like this, everything is a little bit stiff and it needs, we're going to have to go up another, go up one more maybe to there, like that. Okay. So what you want to do, what you want to aim at, is having the treadle bar horizontal, okay? So, so the three points are here, on the collar underneath there, and on the chain here. And then you want to get down here and have a look to see how horizontal is. You want to have it as horizontal as possible. Okay? Alright, that's that. 
what I do with my list. And here it is. And my list. So attach wheel head connect chain. Oh yes. Right now we're going to have to. We're going to add ballast. All right to the to the. So here on the top of the flywheel. you will see these two plates all right so what you want to do is now put the camera down again you want to take off these two plates And that will reveal the two holes. Okay? There's the plate I've taken off, and there are the two holes. Into these two holes, you want to put a funnel, one at a time, and add between five or ten pounds of uh, fine sand or fine gravel into each of these compartments. Same on the other side here. We'll reveal a hole and a hole. There's four holes, there's four compartments. So, yeah, you're going to need to add, weigh it out accurately and add the same amount into each compartment. When you've done that, all right, you're then going to put this plate back, back in situ, all right and do it up okay I'm not going to do that I want to move on I don't want to get bogged down and lose lose time um, next what you want to do is you want to take a grease gun okay and you want to grease up these uh, bearings underneath there underneath here is a bearing now if it's easier you can do that with the this top tray off take it off but if you underneath here there is a grease point here a grease nipple so you're going to you're going to put the grease gun to that and you're going to pump it full of grease the same the same is underneath here, underneath you'll see the bearing there. Okay, apply, apply grease to that bearing. All right, that's, that's the bearings done. Next thing you're going to see is on the top of the coupler here, this I'll refer to as the coupler, okay, because it couples the treadle bar to the crankshaft. So on top of the coupler there, you're going to also squirt down in there some grease <laughs> okay and you see here there's a grease nipple uh, on this pivot arrangement here so you want to add 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 some grease to that guy there okay so those are the four grease points all right when you've done that when you've done that, what you need to do, yes, take your, your oil can and oil, oil here on the treadle pivot, all right, oil that guy and also oil, put a few drops of oil here on the top of the chain here where it moves on the the hook and also at the bottom here okay just oil it there and up there so all right those are your oil points de, de, de. let's see what else what else 
Yes, okay. Right, now, you'll see that the, um, the coupler, I'll take, uh, sorry about folks moving around a bit. This is a bit of a video that's a little bit, a bit hands-on as you can see. So, all right, so you'll see here there's an adjustment because on the underside of this coupler here, this shaft here, all right, that shaft has got an, it goes right the way through and it's got an, a nut on the other side. All right, so at the moment, what we need to do is get that so that the distance between here, the center of this shaft and the center of that bolt is approximately nine inches. So you're going to measure there until you get that to be nine inches. That is actually right, right now. So then with my finger, I can just tighten that underneath there, like that. And then on the top here, I'm gonna simply And that is, as you'll see, nine inches, all right, from center to center. Okay. That is that. Last but not least, what you need to do is find yourself a bucket. Uh, I haven't got a bucket here, but what I'm gonna do is substitute this. It's just a glazed bucket, but that's all right, it'll do for now. My, mi my milky white glaze bucket. All right, I'm just, just take a bucket, take this pipe, put it down into the bucket there like that. All right, so that it can, uh, if it needs to, it can drain. So inside the tray here, if you ever get to a situation where you need to empty out water that's in here. I'll be honest with you, I hardly ever do it. But there is a plug here, a rubber bung, which you take out and all the water, if you have a lot of water, will just go down and into that bucket, okay? That's it, in a nutshell. Um, those are the, the main adjustments that you'll need to make whether you have a kit wheel or whether you have a finished wheel when you get it these this is what you're going to need to do all right um, just bear in mind that it's new it needs bedding in all right for example the the leather strap here, you can see it's quite thick leather and it's attached quite tightly to the shaft here and there's not much, not much play there and you, it actually works better when you have a little bit of play here. This piece of leather as it gets lubricated and you can add a few drops of oil down here as well as giving it some grease. I do on my 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 other wheel over there. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so you you may need to just be a bit patient. The wheel will take a little bit of a bit of bedding in, okay. And also bear in mind that you're not used to the wheel, probably, and you haven't developed any muscle memory in your leg here. So. It will, it will require just a little bit of getting used to. I'll just show you the other wheel here, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so you see, hang on a minute, let me get a bit of light on the subject. Whoa, a bit of light, yeah. Let's have a look. So, if I just put that there, 
This is my other one. You see that slot we got there? That's perfectly good. All right, don't worry. You, you want that, you want a little bit of slop like that, you see? Yeah, it's dusty, the dirt, the pottery will collect on the oil and the grease, but don't worry about that, that's... It'll end up looking something like this, you see, once it's been... Once you've used it for more than five minutes, <laughs> it'll end up looking something like that. But, you'll notice this wheel has got enough momentum, you see, to keep it rotating. That'll carry on rotating for a while. Whereas this one, and presently, as it is, because it's not really lubricated properly, it will not rotate as well. Okay. So, well, folks, I hope that's been of some help to you. More specifically for people who have these wheels from me and they can use this video as a little bit of a getting started, you know, how to, how to get the wheel set up and the adjustments. I would recommend that you probably put in terms of, I did say, um, I did say five to 10 pounds of ballast down there in the, in the flywheel. I'll be honest with you, I'd probably put, I'd, I'd probably, to say that again, I'd probably say seven to 10 pounds. Probably five pounds is not gonna be enough. So that's why you wanna make sure that the wheel, you've got it into, into its location before you add that, because you could potentially be adding 40 pounds of weight. So you don't wanna be having to be, to be moving the wheel around again, you see, after that. Um, yes, it's such a shame, isn't it, to get it all dirty, <laughs> but that's what they're for. Um, once you've got it running and bedded down nicely, the wheel, you'll be able to sit on the wheel. Once you've got used to it, you'll be able to churn out, you know, pots at uh, a minute a piece or two minutes a piece, depending what they are. So, I hope that's been of help to you, especially to people who uh, may be contemplating buying one of these wheels, or some people who've already committed and are waiting for wheels, or have just received them. Uh, I've had 10 of these made so far this year, and I'm taking orders for more. Um, I'm hoping probably the next batch we will have a, a further 10 wheels. I already have three people down on the waiting list, so if you're interested in one of these wheels, I highly recommend them. Um, it's a different throwing experience than throwing on an electric wheel. With an electric wheel you're disconnected from the flywheel, you're disconnected from the, the movement of the clay and the wheel. But with these you, are, you have your foot on the pulse the whole time and it's a different throwing experience and if anybody wants to come here and visit me and, they, and they're not sure they want to have a go you're, I'm very open to anybody having a try on my wheel come and spend a morning here I'll give you clay and you can you can test it out and see if you like it okay folks probably it's going to be my last clip before Christmas so I really wish everybody has a wonderful Christmas and a happy new new year and we look forward to carrying on practicing in 2020 <laughs> thanks for joining me folks keep practicing i'll see you soon bye for now <laughs>